So our next order of business will be the Transportation Impact Fee 101 presentation. So here's our agenda for the presentation. So what we'll talk about first is what are transportation impact fees? What's the purpose of them? The legal background, the standing um, for how the city of Fort Worth is able to levy those fees. Uh, the study itself, which I've referred to already a couple of times to understand what that's about. The exemptions, credits, discounts, and then the appeals process. The timing and the um, impact fee project funding. So how all of that works in the development process, because there's that arc of the process, where does this fit in? And then where you all fit in, the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee. What, what is your role? What's your statutory role as it comes to the program? And then the semi-annual report contents, which will be really helpful for the second presentation of the day. Um, and then, of course, the context for the program. And then there'll be more time for questions at the end if we don't have any throughout the presentation. So what are transportation impact fees? I'm not going to read the slide to you, but what I will tell you is this. This is a charge that is levied by the city to improve regional mobility. I don't actually want money. We want roads. And so the way that we do that is that we can charge this fee when a project comes in for building permit. And if the developer has built roads and donated right away for those roads, they get a discount on that. But if they're unable to do that or unwilling to do that, then we're able to collect the fee so that one fine day the city of Fort Worth can then build those roads. So the purpose of this program primarily is to improve the capacity of, of traffic on our roadways throughout the city of Fort Worth. And there's a mathematical formula. I forgot to mention that part. Um, so these are direct payments um, you know, that are submitted directly to the city of Fort Worth uh, through Acela, and then we turn those around and we invest in our capital projects. And we also have an opportunity, and it's something that we do quite often, is we enter into public-private partnerships with our development partners. So because the development comes in, they typically need to do some kind of infrastructure improvement. So maybe build a couple lanes of a road or put in a signal. We know that there is more to be done there. And if there is money in the impact fee program, then we are able to enter into one of these partnerships with them and give them some money to build more than what their required scope of work is. So if they're to build one signal, maybe we're able to get them to build two. Or if they're building two lanes, maybe we build four. And so this is an opportunity for us to leverage this money to, um, again, increase regional mobility, build roads. That's the main purpose, build roads. All right. Oh, and very important to note, the transportation impact fees are not the same as exactions or rough proportionality. They're covered in two entirely different chapters in the local government code. Um, many times they are spoken about interchangeably, but they are very different programs. But, because there's always a but, um, when a developer does come in and build roads that are on, in the impact fee program that are, that are their exaction and they're also on the study, then we're able to give them credit. So in a way, they kind of get a twofer. So not only are they doing what they need to do, but then they also are able to get a discount on the impact fees owed. All right, so the legal standing, which I kind of just alluded to there. So transportation <laughs> impact fees can be found in Texas Local Government Code 395, which has a very long title, um, but we'll just call them impact fees. There's two different types of impact fees covered in there, transportation and water impact fees, but this is only transportation impact fees that we're talking about today. And the transportation impact fees is the sole purpose of this Capital Improvements Advisory Committee. And then, of course, the Code of the City of Fort Worth takes that chapter a little bit further and adds some detail to it in how we apply um, and collect our transportation impact fees in our Chapter 30, um, Article 8. So here's some detail um, from the Texas Local Government Code and how um, kind of the special sections that this is how we can levy the fee. Um, these are the things that we can actually spend the fees on. So I mentioned construction, but as also we can spend that money on surveying and engineering as it relates to those wider sections. You know, again, for the city to bear more of the burden of that cost. Uh, we can also buy right of way with that. Um, and some other items. The one thing we cannot pay for is staff time. So that would be staff time as it relates to project management. Um, so if the city of Fort Worth is actually building that road section, we can't pay staff to work on that project. Um, and then also for inspection, which is also staff time. Yes, sir. Many people 
don't think we can use this impact tree project to fix the broken road bridge. Yeah. He's ahead of me. Um, so this is what they can't be used for. So as Doug mentioned, <laughs> And it's very important about the maintenance because we get that question a lot. Oh, there's some potholes. Can we use it? No. I really wish I could. Um, but no, the, the local government code 395 specifically restricts the funds for additional capacity. Um, this also trips us up sometimes when we have a road that's a two-lane asphalt road. And what we would want to build there by our design guidelines is a four-lane concrete road. The impact fees can only be used to pay for two lanes of concrete because that's the additional capacity there's already two lanes of asphalt in place. So even though turning those asphalt into concrete benefits everyone, the local government code specifically says, I can only use the impact fees, or the city can only use those impact fees to increase capacity. And that also trips us up from time to time. Let's see here. <laughs> so all, more, more of this is all again about how we are able to um, you know, improve capacity, and again, we're looking at future demand. So the impact fee program and the underlying or the underpinning guide for us is the master thoroughfare plan, where we have projected out, I keep doing that, where we can project out 20 to 25 years of what is the need of the city of Fort Worth as we project the population. And so again, we're looking at um, future points in time, how do we accommodate that and how do we build our network to, to suit all the people who um, rightfully so are making their way to the city of Fort Worth. Local government code further discusses and kind of confines and defines our maximum fee per ser service unit, uh, when we can collect those fees, uh, giving us the authority to, um, to collect them. And it also talks about who doesn't have to pay impact fees. And so school districts and charter schools um, are exempt from impact fee payments. And so that's, again, something to, that we, uh, it's kind of a benefit as we work with um, you know, those who educate our children. And I guess one final thing, which um, isn't really a problem, but if we don't spend the money within 10 years, we have to give it back. Don't worry, I'm working on that. We are definitely going to spend the money before it expires within 10 years. Okay, so chapter 30, article eight, this is within the city of Fort Worth's code. So the, the transportation impact fee program is a fairly young program. Um, it was adopted by the city of Fort Worth in 2008, so 15 years old, quite young. Um, and you know we have modeled it directly after local government code 395, intentionally, so that we have that, um, that state law underpin underpinning our program. And of course, our ordinance has been amended many times um, in those 15 years. Uh, most recently last year with the adopt, or no, actually most recently this year in April, um, where we um, adjusted some of the collection rates for our service areas. All right, so this is the impact fee study itself. By law, we are required to update the impact fee study every five years. We can do it earlier than that, but five years is the outer limit. Um, again, we're forecasting growth. Our master thoroughfare plan projects that growth out 20 to 25 years. What we're looking at specifically in the impact fee uh, study is a 10-year projection. This establishes our service area boundary. So the city of Fort Worth is carved up into uh, 26 service areas, which I will get to in a second. What's really important about the study is it establishes our maximum accessible rate. So this is the maximum we could charge if we charge that rate, which we don't, but it sets up that, that far out maximum. So um, I misspoke, it's 28 service areas. So there's 28 service areas within the city, nine of them are no fee service areas. And what that means to you and me is that the regional mobility need for those service areas has been met. So the master thoroughfare plan in those zones has been built. So in all of those other areas, it hasn't been. So you can see, you know, inside the loop, it's all gray except for Panther Island and those canals. Uh, but in that area, um, there, there's actually only two projects, the White Settlement Bridge and the White Settlement Intersection. Uh, but all around kind of the outside of the loop, there are regional mobility needs and that's where this money goes. The funds collected in a service area stays in that service area. So it isn't a fee that's collected maybe in the north side of town and used in the south. There is actually that service area boundary limits where we can spend it. So if it's um, collected there, it's spent there. So um, this slide has a lot of 
letters on it. Um, suffice to say, those in color are the fee collecting ones, and those that are gray are no fee. And so if we are in um, a gray zone, what we're looking for here is actually redevelopment. So this is a bonus in a way. When we have new developers come into the city of Fort Worth and they look to redevelop a site, they will not be, levy, they will not be charged um, or levied impact fees. And so this is a way, and again, for us to encourage that redevelopment of some of our areas of town. So this is a image of a map from the um, traffic impact fee study. So this is specifically service area, ooh, that's tiny, F, there it is. Um, and so what's interesting about this map is that you can see on it what, where the projects are. So the little bubbles are the actual named projects within the program. We've got the blue squares, those are intersections. And then the segments that are a color other than black, then those are the segments where we've got um, projects planned for those zones. And it, within the impact fee study, we actually do a cost estimate for those um, roadways so that we can understand what is that need, what is the dollar valuation of that need. All right, so how are the flight fees calculated? We are not gonna go through the math exactly, don't worry. Um, so again, the study sets our maximum assessable rate and the way that we do that is we gather pieces of information to create that number. So we gather all the land use and population projections. So we do a lot of work with COG to get those data sets. Also looking at our future land use plan to see kind of what are we projecting as the use throughout the city of Fort Worth. Then we develop a 10-year impact fee transportation improvement plan. Um, basically a subset of the master thoroughfare plan. If the master thoroughfare plan is out 25 years and we're only trying to project out 10 years, what do we think is gonna be needed in the big plan in the next 10 years only? And then we remove costs associated with existing development and growth after 10 years. So again, not looking out beyond 10 years, just within that 10 year time frame. And so we calculate that maximum per service area. And this is what that maximum fee per service area, which is per vehicle mile, um, in each of our service areas. So in some of our service areas, um, they are due to become no fee service areas either in, in the next cycle or the next one after that. So we're looking at some of our lower cost ones. So like AA at the very top end of the city of Fort Worth. Um, you know, that one is a very low um, service unit, which means it's mostly built out. Another low one is D and F. So again, those will likely become no fee service areas in the near future. The ones where the, the max fee per service unit is quite high, those are areas with the most demand. Um, and so you're looking at areas like uh, Z or M, you know, these are areas with a lot of need. All right, again, no numbers here exactly, just some kind of rough calculations. So the maximum fee per service area is determined, it's the sum of the eligible traffic costs over the growth. So it's what do we think is going to grow in the next 10 years over what we need in the next 10 years. And that's how we get our maximum service unit. And at the bottom there is a calculation of what that would look like. All right, schedule two. So lots of people talk about schedule one. Schedule two now is a percentage of schedule one. Schedule two is our collection rate. This is established by council because um, as, a, as a policy, we don't want the development community to bear the full brunt of the expansion. And this is to help our economic growth, and, and there's lots of good reasons to do that. And so council has established what those collection rates will be. So I mentioned that on June 1st, the collection rate was established for residential properties. It would be 50% of that maximum rate. And then for non-residential developments, it's 40% of that scheduled one rate. Now, if you look, I've highlighted 50% there, and then there's lots of words after that. Let me explain. We wanted to get to 65% of the Schedule One for residential properties, but doing that in one jump seemed uh, just very challenging to bear for the development community. And so what we've done is we've basically taken a step approach. So it's 50% now, June 1st next year it'll go to 55%, then 60% the following due first, and then 65%. So we will get there, but not just not at one, one big step. And so that was the compromise that was reached last year. So how do we estimate the impact fees? 
there's a spreadsheet for that. It's available on the website. If you're curious about it, I welcome you to go and tinker around with it. If you break it, let me know, because we're not supposed to be able to break it. So um, I need to go and fix that. So please feel free to click that link um, and, um, and tinker around with it. But what that is, what that's used for is to provide transparency for the program. So this is available to, to anyone, to the development community, so to our owners, to our engineers, um, and so that they can estimate what their impact fees will be, and they don't need to rely on staff to provide them that number. It is here for them um, to kind of determine sort of, as they're developing their property, what is the right mix for what um, their financial situation can bear. All right. Exemptions. So now that I've mentioned how expensive it all is, everybody's super excited about exemptions. So our exemptions, we have our public schools that are an exemption. Open enrollment charter schools are also an exemption. Properties that are in our neighborhood empowerment zones, those are also exempt. Um, and then what we also do with our impact proof program is change of use permits for previously occupied space, they are also exempt. So uh, for example, if there was a warehouse, the first finish out you know, so it's just a shell. Nobody knows what's inside it yet. The first time it's built out, that would incur impact fees because now we know what's going in there. Let's say five years later, that tenant moves out and someone else moves in. That second tenant wouldn't be charged transportation impact fees. So again, working on that redevelopment uh, angle for the city of Fort Worth. Credits. Credit towards impact fees are given for, as I mentioned before, the dedication of right-of-way for MTP roads, um, and this is typically associated with the final plat where that's uh, recorded and that right-of-way is officially dedicated to the city of Fort Worth. Um, improvements towards our MTP roadways, and you know, again, this is either done through the engineering process um, as a part of our development process arc or through a future improvement agreement. Um, and or other improvements supplying additional capacity or excess capacity to what is there today. Want to build roads, want capacity. That's what, we're, that's what we're looking for. And the credits are good for 10 years. So we'll create a credit agreement um, to capture this for our development community so that when they come in, they hand us the big publisher clearinghouse coupon that says, I now have $2 million worth of credit. Please don't charge me impact fees for the next 20 permits that I pull. So um, I really actually wish it was a big coupon like that. I think it'd be more fun, um, but it's actually a very boring document. Either way, it's their coupon. Um, here is all the legalese behind that coupon. I'll skip this. So what do we not give credit for? We don't give credit for right-of-way or infrastructure that is solely for that development. So if you think of a subdivision, the big road outside, you know, the big four and six lane road with... Um, the, the median and the trees and the sidewalks, that's what we get credit for, but the interior roads inside that development, we don't give credit for those roadways. Um, so what we can do is um, we don't give credit for roadways on the MTP that are not in the impact fee study unless we agree, so staff agrees with the developer, that it provides value and it provides capacity for more than just their development. So there have been cases when we've been able to do that. Um, and again, you know, happy to do that. Next slide. All right, so here is that, that area where exactions and transportation impact fees overlap. So again, the exaction is part of Chapter 212, where the city says, you know, thank you so much for building the city of Fort Worth because you're adding this brand new office building here with, I don't know, 400 jobs. There's going to be a whole bunch of cars. We need some um, you're going to need to put in a signal, and this is all determined by the traffic impact assessment. If part of that scope is on the master thoroughfare plan or it's in the transportation improvement plan, then we can give you credit. We can give that developer credit for that effort and that work, and that's that green spot in between. All right. Other discounts. So this is where the city is championing uh, specific types of activities or developments. So we have four of them right now. So our adequate public facilities discount, or our APFD, we really like acronyms. It's a 50% reduction on the Schedule Two rate, which, as I mentioned before, like if it's non-residential, it's already 40%, right? So this would take it down to 20% Schedule One. So a 50% reduction on the Schedule Two rate um, if the majority of the traffic comes off of a road that's already built. So if you've already got a road that's sat outside your development and all your traffic's going there, then we'll say that you have adequate public facilities and will reduce your contribution. 
Another discount is our mixed use multimodal development discount. So this is trying to um, encourage trip capture. So development near rail stations, um, bicycle paths and, and things of that nature. So really, uh, this is sort of our green discount, if you will. And it ranges between 10 and 25%, depending on the trip capture that's indicated in their traffic impact assessment. The extraordinary investment discount, this is one where we have sort of linked up with economic development, where we are trying to give those extraordinary investments that get tax abatement um, agreements with economic development, we're going to give them an additional perk, so something else to say, thank you so much for choosing Fort Worth as your home. So this re um, reduction is 25 to 50 percent, um, and that is based on their, um, their investment in the city of Fort Worth. So $25 million and the creation of 75 new jobs at at least twice the current minimum wage plus benefits. So you know, these are, are good paying jobs and if they provide more than that, then the percentage increase can go up to 50%. And last but not least, our small business discount. We keep talking large, this one's for our small our small developments that are coming to the city of Fort Worth. So this is a 25% reduction of the Schedule 2. This is usually for the finish out, so it's not for new build. These are genuinely for our, our new and growing small businesses, our, our bakeries, our salons, that kind of thing, that are in, um, kind of growing in our spaces, in our shell spaces. So this will be an independently owned entity it's a Fort Worth address. It's very important to us. Um, they're not going to be a subsidiary or a franchisee. The this goal of this is not to support McDonald's. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to go for homegrown and have avenue, annual revenues of $2.5 million um, or less. So, again, trying to make sure they're small uh, for the most recent 12-month period. And, of course, they will be validating this information for us. Okay, so appeals. We get a couple of these every now and again. Um, largely in part to, you know, maybe providing additional detail, which maybe wasn't considered at the time that the fee was levied. So the, the appeal must be submitted in writing within 30 days of the fee being levied. So that is at the building permit stage. And what can be appealed is their land use. So, you know, maybe we've determined that um, it's a salon. We've called it a hair salon. It's actually a dog salon. And so we maybe have picked um, the wrong uh, selection in the estimator for them, and so we can work that out. Um, you know, maybe they want us to take another look at the discounts, and maybe they want us to reconsider what credits are available for them. There is some information that's required for that appeal, and the first appeal would we'll just go to, to staff because it would just be a conversation. I um, mean, you know, if that doesn't work out, they appeal to the director, then the city manager's office, um, and then finally there could be an appeal to city council. And I will say it very rarely gets that far, so because we do try to work it out as best we can. So timing. The impact fees are assessed at the time of the final plat. And what that does is that locks in their maximum assessable rate. That is where their study is established, so which study that they're under. And then they're collected when the building permit application is accepted, which is not necessarily approved. So that means they've submitted everything that we need and it's all in order. That's when we say, okay, at this point, this is the collection rate. Um, for example, when our collection rates went up on June 1st, we had a flood of building permits come in that last week of May. <laughs> because we're like, oh, I don't want to do this. And, and so we appreciate that. And so what, so what staff did was they worked overtime um, you know, to make sure that anything that was submitted that we were able to determine whether or not it was, um, you know, accepted before that June 1st date so that, you know, if, um, if our development partners did that hard work and got it in, you know, that we were able to lock them in at that um, earlier collection rate. And so I'm sure before the next increase that will happen again. So this is a uh, very rough process map for uh, the process, um, for the the development process arc, it is way more detailed than this, so um, please don't take this as um, the word. The green boxes are where the impact fee program kicks in. So this is where we're, we're assessing and we're capturing credits and we are doing our level best to um, make sure that we are applying our impact fees in accordance with state and local law um, and that, uh, and we've done our level best to explain what's going on in those processes. The other um, areas, so this is you know, the beginning of the process, zoning, platting, engineering, you know, the final plat, but once that final plat is recorded and the um, development team is able to now move into getting building permits, 
that's where we kick in. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. There's a lot going on here. All right, so what do we use them for? Again, we expand the scope of any of development pro project that's out there. Uh, we can, so through our public-private partnerships, and then we're also able to fund named projects within the impact fee study and in the service area. So again, most importantly, the money that's collected in the service area stays in that service area. Da -da -da -da. I think I said that. Got ahead of myself. So why are y'all here <laughs> and being subjected to this very long presentation? So the role of the CIAC as identified in the local government code 395 is that you will advise and assist in adopting the land use assumptions. So all of those assumptions come to you first for recommendation before it goes to city council. You review the transportation improvement program, so the maps, you do that first, then it goes to council. Uh, you monitor and evaluate the implementation of the transportation improvement plan. You receive semi-annual reports, which you'll hear in a second, and it's a much shorter presentation. Um, and then you'll advise um, the need to update the land use assumptions, the transportation improvement plan, the fee, if there's anything that you all are aware of or that we've brought to your attention that needs to be raised up to council. This is what um, this body will do, is you'll make that recommendation. Um, and then we have, as I mentioned before, two CIACs, one for transportation and one for water. Fortunately, we just have to do the transportation ones here. So who is the CIAC? Um, so as you walked in here today, you were the City Plan Commission, and now you are the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee. Um, this is allowed by uh, Local Government Code 395, and so we very much appreciate you all doing that for us. Um, and, it's, uh, and of course, you're all private citizens, which is wonderful, and it gives us this uh, perspective to the program that we as staff don't have, and we really appreciate that sort of exterior um, look at what we're doing. And we typically meet twice a year for each of the semi-annual reports. It gets a bit more exciting and more frequent um, during the year where we do an actual study update because we'll be bringing to you um, kind of hot off the presses uh, status updates on where we are in that process. So we'll bring to you, you know, oh, we discovered this and oh, this happened. And we want to make sure that you all stay very well informed. Okay, semi-annual report. What does it contain? The ins and the outs in short, so the revenue and the expenditures in the program. Um, I won't go into detail here, I've got that other presentation, but at the end of it, we'll be asking you to make a recommendation to approve the semi-annual report as presented and um, what was given to you in your packets. For more information about the Transportation Impact Fee Program, please check out our online resources at www.fortworthtexas.gov forward slash impact dash fees forward slash transportation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our general inquiries line at 817-392-8743 or contact us at trif at fortworthtexas.gov. Thank you for watching.